Okay, we're going to graph this rational function. Um, now, here's what happens with this rational function. As I said before in other videos, you want to look for a vertical or and a horizontal asymptote. But in this one, since you have an x and it has a power of 1, that means that this has a degree of 1. And since this has an x with a power of 1, this also has a degree of 1. Therefore, they have the same degree. And because of that, that does tell you you have a horizontal asymptote, but you have to go looking for it. Now, the way to look and find what your horizontal asymptote would be is you take this 2x minus 1, and you'd use long division. So, basically, you'd say how many times can... I actually like to think of it this way. What number multiplies by x to get 2x? And then you'd say the number 2. 2 times x gets you 2x. You want these to match. That's the whole goal. Sorry, my hand was in the way. You want these to match. 2 times 1 is 2. And then what you're doing is you're taking this quantity and subtracting it, just like regular div long division. This distributes in here and becomes negative, so therefore these cross out. This distributes in here also becomes negative, therefore I would get negative 3. And this would be my remainder. So what happens is x plus 1 is what you divided by, and this negative 3 goes on top of that. This positive 2 that you divided by that's where you get your horizontal asymptote. So at positive 2, you now have a horizontal asymptote. Your vertical asymptote is the same as it always has been. You'd say, what is my restriction? What value makes this quantity 0? Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So at negative 1, you have this vertical asymptote. Now, this will give you a guiding picture of what your graph is supposed to look like. Now, again, just like before, I've told you, you want to use two sets of inputs and two sets of outputs. So, I say, use the numbers closest to the red line. So the numbers that are closest here on this side, 0, 1, 2. On this side, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Um, now, people have been asking me to actually do the all the way out calculations for how to get some of the values. So let's try positive 2. You have a choice. First of all, if you want, you can go back to the original equation and plug it into here. Or you can go to this equation and plug it here. I personally recommend this one. It doesn't matter if it's this one. Trust me. So what I'll do is I'll put this f of 2 into the function 2 times 2 minus 1 all over 2 plus 1, which gives me 3 over 3, which is 1. Now I plug in 1. 2 times 1 minus 1 all over 1 plus 1. This becomes 1. This becomes 2. That's how you get 1 half. Last but not least, raise it up a little, you would get 0. Put it there. 2 times 0 minus 1 all over 0 plus 1, which is negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. So when we put these inputs and outputs in our graph, we have 0, negative 1 is right here, 1 is 1 half, and 2 is 1. And when we connect these, just like before, we get close to the asymptotes but never touch them, close to the asymptotes, never touch them. All right, let's keep continuing with our math. Let's do these other inputs and outputs. If I use negative 2, what's going to happen is I'll get 2 times negative 2 minus 1 all over negative 2 plus 1, which would be negative 4, negative 5 all over negative 1, which is 5. Next down, we'd have negative 3. 2 times negative 3 minus 1 all over negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 7 all over negative 2. 
Now, I wouldn't leave your answer like that. As you've noticed in other videos, I use whole numbers. It's much better to say, how many times does 2 go into 7? 2 goes into 7 three times. One remainder over 2. It turns into positive because it's a negative divided by a negative. So this is how I'm getting these whole values in my other videos, because I'm taking this and making it into a mixed number. Last but not least, one more. We have f of negative 4, and that's going to equal 2 times negative 4 minus 2 all over negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 9 all over negative 3, which is the same thing as just 3. So let's go back up here, plot these points. We have negative 2, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there it is. We have negative 3, 3 and a half. 1, and then we have negative 4 with 3. This gets really, really close to this asymptote, never touches it, and really, really close to this asymptote, never touches it, and that's what your graph looks like.